Simon Chimchak, Father Jay, para mejor conocimiento, Father Jay, eh, es doctor en teología, especialista en el pensamiento de Carlos Bochtigua y promotor del amor humano en todas sus dimensiones. Es cofundador de la Family Support Foundation, que se encuentra alrededor del mundo eh, dando programas de fortalecimiento al matrimonio y también uh, prep, marriage, too. Yeah, it's marriage prep, too. Eh, eh, y trabajó casi desde el inicio del Instituto mm, para la Familia en Lomiansky, Varsovia. Eh, fundado por el arzobispo Kasim Siev, no sé, de, bueno, ustedes créanme, ¿no? Eh, que después formó parte de la universidad el cardenal Stefan Wyszynski, ¿no? Eh, la verdad es que lo que se puede decir aquí no es nada comparado con lo que ustedes van a escuchar, es una gran persona. Hemos tenido la fortuna de estar conviviendo con él desde hace algunas horas. Personalmente tenía mucho interés de conocerlo, ¿no? Y tenemos mucho interés, como ya lo hemos dicho, de, de trabajar con él. Nos sentimos muy honrados en la Universidad Panamericana con su visita. Muchas gracias por unirse a la reunión. Hay un poco más de 25 personas, más o menos, eh, con el más, más, más de 30 personas conectadas. Y mmm, vamos a, a recibir de él la conferencia Show the Beauty of Human Love. To teaching, ¿no? Así que es, ahora sí que nuestra especialidad, eh, cómo enseñar la belleza del amor humano a través de la enseñanza, ¿no? Entonces, él eh, impartirá inglés, que se le entiende perfectamente, ¿no? Eh, el inglés para los que no somos nativos del inglés. Y bueno, pues bienvenidos y muchísimas gracias al Departamento de Humanidades. Carla, Marce, sin ustedes esto no hubiera sido posible. Y muchas gracias a los profesores que están aquí presentes, ¿sale? Listo, adelante. Bravo. Lord Jesus Jesus Christ, praise be the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, when John Paul II became the, uh, the Pope, uh, he started using something like this, Lord Jesus Christ, which was a little confusing because Nobody was used to do this. And when I first uh, time went to the United States and I asked, how do you say uh, Laudat Jesus Christus in English? And they say, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> so I learned that they say, uh, praise be the Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever, which is the classic uh, in, in, in Latin, in, 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 like saying hello, Laudat Jesus Christus. Um, I'm starting with this uh, greeting because uh, this is um, which is like main uh, about us. Uh, we we are Christians, we are Catholics, and our identity comes from the name how we are called Christians. So our identity comes from our Lord Jesus Christ, and this is so so important. Um, thank you for beautiful introduction and a very special way for your for your invitation. Um, short words about me, I was uh, ordained uh, 20, uh, 30, 37 years ago, in 1985. So when I say normally that I am 40 years old, people are like, how it's possible? I'm using this 40 years old to 100, um, because when I turn 50, I start counting down, or going back, you know, to the being like children. So I'm 60 years old and 37 years uh, I'm a priest and uh, probably if you if you count this, uh, I, I was ordained a little bit younger than, than canon law uh, give us the permission. I was ordained when I was 23 years old. So I had to have permission from the Holy See to be ordained younger. Um, but all my life I spent um, at the university when I was ordained in 1985, immediately I joined the university and then I made my, I made my MA and my PhD and I always will focus on, on marriage and family. That was my institute. I joined the Institute for Studies on the Family 
I was a assistant or founder of this institute, a very famous, a beautiful person, a bishop, Archbishop Kazimierz Majdański. It's a long story about him. It's not time to, to, to say this, <clears throat> but this is, that was really an uh, amazing place to, to work for priests, uh, to be focused on, on marriage. And I perfectly understand what Karol Wojtyla uh, said once, I fall in love with human love. And this is the, also what I like, I like to share with you um, to the, to, today, uh, sharing with you my experience, my years of, of, of working with marriages and with couples, but also working at the university for 27 years. The first, uh, Father Jay died and he went to heaven. <laughs> He's coming to, to the gate and there is a, some small notes and it was on this note was, sorry, the researchers has no, no entry to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> this is the reward for so many years working at the university. I dedicated all my life to, to this work. It wasn't my you know, free will because my bishop sent me to this university and I did everything possible to be as good as, as possible. And then the reward, and but, but there was also no direction. Like, no entry to heaven, but there was like a redirection. So, so Father Jay was really sad and like, what I have to do? It's like no purgatory, no another life. So probably I would be a, a, like a, the ghost in the classrooms uh, or in the visiting my students, not really dedicated to study. So I have no, what will be my new job description if, if I can't go to heaven? So like, Father Jay is like 200 meters away from the gale, it's like the whistle. And with St. Peter from the river, where are you going? I don't know, it's just no researchers. So I'm, you know, I don't know where to go. Come on. You are not that kind of researchers. Please come. <laughs> I was invited once uh, to, <coughs> to give some sort of lectures of training to priests, um, especially dedicated to work with families. But these priests work for Warsaw. Warsaw is our capital city. And if you're from the capital city, you need to be at uni much, much better than any other. So some people who, who um, knew about this invitation said, oh, oh, no, don't go, don't, don't go. It will be difficult for you. Because uh, you are nobody, you're just PhD, but this is, you know, for them it's nothing. But another uh, priest told me, no, no, no. If you're going to people who work with families, that's total different environment. And this is true that when we work with the families and if we work for the future, you know, families, because your students are not married, but they will be married. And you will give them a beautiful introduction to the, to the life, which is um, for them an opportunity to learn something about their identity as a Christians, about the beauty of theology and the beauty of many, many things. You, you are giving them lectures, you are giving something really different. There is a very popular model uh, of, um, let's call this, uh, self-development. If we go to the, uh, all the books today are published about self-development, about growing, we'll, we'll see almost the same, the same um, <coughs> idea. Mindset, heart set, soul set, and health set. And this is like, please. Hi. Hi. How are you? Fine. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And this is like very popular model. Yeah, yeah, if to really grow, you need to have a good mindset. You need to take care of your relationship. You need to be a good communication with God and you need to be healthy. Like the Romans used to say, better is the living dog than the dead lion. So it's important to have some condition to work, you know, to enjoy this life. And everybody who is teaching this model, they 
do not tell the truth that this is not their model. Because their model, we know perfectly, if I will start this, I will start this in English, but you can change immediately into Spanish. This is the most important question which was asked to our Lord by one of the Pharisees, what is the most important commandment? And he said, and the most important is to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strengths. So this is not the model of self-development. This is the model of loving God. And if we will use this model and we will give wills and we will have a car. So if you think about these four elements as a, as, a, as a will, that from my perspective as a driver, doesn't matter which tire is flat because we will not could travel. So from my perspective, doesn't matter if the, my students, they have problem with spirituality or with the relationship or the mindset, it's not so good or the health is not good. We have something important miss. We need to have our tires healthy, good condition, because if you have something which is, doesn't work, that it that, yeah, will be in danger. I only once saw a, a, a car who was driving without, you know, just on the metal, everything, the gun was lost. And this lady was so scared, it's like, it's just one idea, go home. <laughs> because she had no idea what to do. So she was driving, extremely stressed because the noise and, and everything. So from that perspective, if the people have problem with spirituality or the people who have problem with mindset, it's the same, the same concern because you can't have just one beautiful tire and the people could spend you know, years uh, developing their spirituality. They are perfect. They pray every day, everyday mass, adoration, meditation. They know Bible almost on memory. But the relationship, well, they do not have time because they are focused on, on practicing religion. They have not good health because it's uh, the body is something you know dangerous. So don't care of your body because you would be focused on your ego. The mindset they read only books about spirituality. So it's beautiful person. I have once retreats, which I generally don't do. But once I was in, 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 invited and I gave a, a retreat. And it was a beautiful movement, uh, mostly charismatic oriented movement, uh, like yep, something like this. And they asked me for private retreats only for this group. So it was like 150 people uh, together. We, they found a nice place to, to have these retreats. It's okay. We forget the age. The age is, is heart set. Heart. And this is health set. Okay. Thank you, friend. Corazón. Yeah. And salud. 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 Erika wants to salud. Yeah. <laughs> Important. Because we always do this for health. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So also part of these retreats was confession. So I, 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 I went to the, the, the room and I had confession. And it was a lady, and you know, as a priest, you will be really touched the way of her really deep confession. She was really close to Jesus, but she spoke about prayer, about you know her weaknesses, like in finding time, and she was really concerned about doing everything possible to be as good as possible. So you, as a priest, you will be really touched. The problem is that what not normal please it was Father Jay listening to this confession. Because when she finished her confession, I asked her, my dear sister, how many years you are in a congregation or in the convent? I said, no, I'm not a hermana, I'm not a religious <laughs> sister, I am a wife. And excuse me, that confession was religious 
extremely spiritual mother superior <laughs> 25 years in the congregation. You said nothing about, you know, taking care of your husband, about, you know, bringing him all the attention which they need to have to be recognized as I love, because for men, attention and recognition of the achievement is the way of understanding love her for women is like being really safe with in this relationship so we have different languages also you know different expectation of relationship she said nothing about her as a wife or as a mother so of course could you imagine a tough father jay saying something like this so she was really emotional <laughs> but sorry no mercy <laughs> for me identity is crucial because if you are not praying right way, you are missing something important. If you are a married woman, you need to pray as a married woman. If you are a mother, you need to pray as a married woman and mother. If you are a man and you are your you are husband and you are father, you have to pray. It should be based on your identity. And that's my crazy idea. I have spent years researching and learning everything possible to understand this, this, this model. So let's go to that very important question which we have for this meeting. We have to be, to do, and to have. So our goal for this meeting is what we can do to have an effect which will be delivered to our students the best quality teaching and what we can do to make our students really happy i know perfectly your situation i was lecturing for 27 years and as a priest i gave a lot of match preparation courses and our in poland whenever a couple wants to be a, a, a sacramental uh, they have to finish a special course, marriage preparation course. It's obligatory. So they have to finish this and they need to have a paper. And with this paper, they can go to the priest and then they can start procedure how to prepare themselves to the, the sacrament of, of marriage, but in the church. But they need to have finishing, they need to finish this, uh, this, this course. And um, you have how long does that course take? It's normally it should be about 10 weeks. Okay. If you have the very intensive version, it could be five or six weeks, but still it's a, it's some space. And you know, majority of people who are coming, they come in because they have to come. Mm -hmm. So probably you have experienced the same as a community is that your students are coming, but they are not really interested in the subject. So one of our main uh, activities and main uh, question is what we can do to have the effect which they like these lectures, uh, they want to come, they learn, and they can change their lives because of the beauty of, of things we, we did for them. But one uh, point is missing. Karol Wojtyła, future uh, John Paul II, if, if, we, uh, re, um, if we research his teaching, we very often, very often we will find, um, we will find a, a Roman saying or Latin saying, agere sequitur esse, agere sequitur esse or operari sequitur esse which means the action comes from identity. That's the, his main famous book, uh, Action and Person. And he said in this book that when I see an action, I can immediately, I have access to the identity of this person because through this action, I can recognize him. And very often we miss this part and this part is the most uh, the most important because agere operari sequitur essen 
And uh, to have comes from our Lord who said, after results, you will know them. But if he said, after results, you will know them, he directs us not to do, but to them, again, to the identity. For example, we have uh, a very famous practice, especially connected with land, which is almsgiving, prayer, and fasting. And when I, I'm a priest, you are my parishioners, or you came to my retreats, and I will say, guys, I like to, uh, to use uh, or to, 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 to speak about fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. What is your first thought about the subject? Works of mercy. Yeah, but still works. Yeah. What we have to do. So if you will speak about prayer, so probably he will expect from us to pray more. If you will say, speak about fasting, so he said, oh guys, please, during the Lent, no tequila, even if you are for <laughs> No exemption. <laughs> <laughs> we in Poland can't have uh, tequila daily, you have, but no tequila during the Lent, meaning right? because we're very pious, or no uh, sweet, or no candies, no, no sugar during the Lent. I, I will stop watching Netflix, or some young people that are not using Facebook for, for Lent. And again, this is about doing and almsgiving. So our pastor would like to have more money from us for his, for his parish. So immediately when we think about fasting, prayer, and, and almsgiving, we think about to do. Could you imagine our Lord, there is many, place, many, uh, many places in the Bible when he's mentioned this, our Lord early in the morning, walk up or climb up, uh, climb up, up to the mountain. And what do you think? Of course, he went to pray. So he went up to say rosary. He went up to say the, the litany of the sacred, most sacred heart of Jesus. He didn't go to pray as a to-do. He went to meet with his father. He went to be with him. Not to do something and we can have a checklist and okay, I'm done with this. So when we speak today about having a beautiful result, which is our lectures and what we can to do to touch our students, how we can help them, sorry, I will not share it with you any to do because to do is not an answer. Because if you will do, to do without reflection of who we are, then we will miss something important. And we know, we met this many, many times in our process of learning, that immediately we can see, we can hear the professor, what he's teaching, he's not practicing. And when we deliver, we mostly deliver the testimony of our lives. Saint Paul Paul VI, he, he wrote in Evangelium Nunziandi, the modern man prefers to listen to witnesses instead of teachers. If he listens to teachers, it is because they are witnesses. Everything is about our testimony. Everything is about what we put into our lectures. So it's everything it's about us without formating ourselves, without, you know, concerning about to be. And fortunately, John Paul II, Karol Wojtyła proof, action comes from, from, from person. So if we will focus on this, our to-do immediately will be improved when, whenever we will improve this. But I, I like to use the same strategy which was used by, by our Lord. And also we have, uh, as a result, beautiful men and men and women he created the beautiful catechesis. We, he spent several years teaching about the, the beauty of, of, of marriage. In this, uh, we have the, the collection of this, of this um, 
catechesis or his talks. And let's, uh, so let's do the same like Jesus did. And he started, he, he said, okay, let's look how it was in the beginning. So probably you know this story better than me because you are professional teachers of, of theology, some of you. So we have uh, at the beginning, Adam and Eve. How they were created at the beginning. They received a nature. So the nature is which we can recognize the difference between if we know the nature, so there is no problem for us to recognize it, uh, who is who or what is what. If I will ask, uh, if you will ask me, I'm the first time in this place, Father, could you please bring uh, an archer? I do not need to know uh, all the archers, but I will recognize this is archer and this is a chair, or this is just a table. And then when you ask me to bring a table, I will recognize table because table has different nature than the chair. So the nature is that they were different that animals, they were or have a specific nature. And we call this status nature pure, a state of pure nature. And the good news or bad news is that this is only theoretical name because Adam and Eve never existed in the state of nature pure, state of pure nature, because immediately in the moment of they were created, they received gifts which are over our nature, and this gift is a justice and holiness. God shared with them immediately gifts which are natural for God, but extra, over, over natural for, for human beings. So we, we were receive holiness and justice. When the Bible speaks about Joseph as a, as a just man, it was something like recognition. He had something from the, from the beauty of the, of the creation at the beginning. But for God, it wasn't, uh, it, it, he didn't finish on this level because immediately he shared with them some gifts what below his nature, but outside or extra of our nature, and this gift belongs to angels. And the angels' gifts are immortality, painless, uh, harmony of faculties, yeah. and yeah, and uh, the knowledge. So it was four gifts we received as a human being from angels, which wasn't part of our of our nature. And let's stay on this on this moment. Adam and Eve are immortal; they will never die. They have, uh, uh, they do not, they do not uh, suffer. There is no pain. They are living in the harmony of faculties. Whatever they think, they have a will to do this, and they have a perfect knowledge. So tell me what will be or what was the the goal for Adam and Eve when created in paradise. Mm -hmm. The first command is to reproduce. Multiply. Yes. Worship okay. God. No. no. Worship God. No. 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 Being fruitful and multiply. Reproduce. Yes. That was the one and the second. There are two goals. So, so do the earth. Yes. So make as many farms as possible and be a parent as often as possible. So let's say it's 100 years. There are parents uh, every year <laughs> because no pain, it's a pleasure. They are immortal. So uh, they um, deliver uh, the 100 uh, uh, child. They're very yes. happy. And of course, because their first uh, son, uh, how many daughters, how many boys? <laughs> 52, 48. <laughs> 50 50. Oh, yeah. And Saint Thomas Aquinas, when he uh, uh, wrote a Summa Theologia, in one of the, of the, of the Summa is, uh, is uh, about the, the beauty of creation. 
And he also mentioned that because of the harmony of faculties, they will have make, they can make decisions with boy, then girl, boy, girl, because we need couples. So we need the same number of girls for boys and the same number of boys to girls. So he said, will be the same number if we we'll do not have a, an original sin. So, okay, so we have a situation, Adam and you are parents of 100 children. And of course, because of the uh, 18 years old, let's say 18 years old boy married a 16 years old uh, woman, that was the beginning. So the gene was so great. So there was no problem with being in relationship with, with your family. So probably we have several thousand uh, of, of people on earth. Okay. What is the goal for Adam and Eve from the, from the God's perspective? Why they are here? Okay. 1,000 years later, they delivered 1,000 child. And then, of course, there is much, much more. And we have almost you know, many, many countries, many, many farms. Is any goal for Adam and Eve? If we do not find a goal, we will start, we'll finish with the overpopulation, <laughs> which, is the, which is the myth or is the, the very bad idea. And you know, by the way, uh, yeah, it worked close. Okay, thank you for starting answering this question. But do you know how many uh, part of Earth we will uh, we will cover if we put every people together like standing this way? Texas, Texas, uh, less Corsica. In Texas, we will cover every family with a small house. Oh, yes. Well, it's, uh, it's crazy. We have overpopulation, it's too many people. But if you look globally, so Corsica is the, is the place when we will put every human being together and we will, you know, just, you know, standing, but still. So happy. They are happy. They are parents of 1,000 children and they have beautiful farms. They are, you know, no pain, no, um, especially for women, you know. Yeah, by the way, you know what's the best profession for wife, husband profession for wife? Archaeologist. The older she is, he is more interested in <laughs> So they're happy. She's you know, all the same age. She's 18 years old. She looks beautifully and no pain, harmony of faculties, knowledge. Okay, so they are happy to think. What's the goal for Adam and Eve? How the God look at them and said, what is the real goal, goal, um, goal for them? Love them. To love them. To love each other. Yeah, they love each other, you know, doesn't children, something like that, you know? doesn't come from, from hate. You know? For that to, to give us love. Yeah, but they're in good relationship with God. He comes uh, regularly for tea. Oh, Have you heard about the aliens who landed on Earth? Yeah. Recently, aliens, you yeah. know, from space, they landed on I Earth. It was a fantasy, no? No, no, it's true. It's a fact. So re recently, <laughs> aliens land. It's secret, but I can share with you some. <laughs> <laughs> so aliens landed on Earth. And it took some time they would found how we can communicate. Mm -hmm. So to understand each other. So probably they start using English. You know, you know, <laughs> if you watch any movie about aliens, all of them speak English. So it's probably it's, 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 okay, they found how to how to communicate, how to speak in, in, in English. Or oh, that the like language to communicate. And they sent one guy from Vatican. Oh, that's important. The Vatican sent one important guy. And they have some questions to them, and they ask him, uh, ask them, them the question, have you ever heard about Jesus? Jesus? Yeah, Jesus Christ, son of God. Oh, that Jesus. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, he's like every year, four or five times visiting us. Are you kidding? Four or five times yearly? Yeah. 
He visited us only once, 2,000 years ago. Oh, maybe he doesn't like your chocolate. <laughs> what do you mean he doesn't like your chocolate? Yeah, we have who are famous of amazing chocolate. So whenever he comes to visit us, we make amazing chocolate for him. What did you do for him when he came to us? <laughs> no wonder. Yeah. <laughs> and see, he wants to be with us, you know, in the Blessed Sacrament. So it's really, really love. So they have very good chocolate every day or tea or <laughs> maybe tequila if they were Mexicans. Start to <laughs> use this very Jalisco. <laughs> So what the goal for Adam and Eve? Is there any idea for God creating Adam and Eve and putting them in the paradise, giving them this task? He had a plan for them. Glorified body. They did. They are beautiful in the, in the shape and everything. And they... No, but I mean like even more. Yeah, even more. Like St. Irenaeus said that when God created man, he had Jesus Christ resurrected in his mind. Mm -hmm. So it's not just stating paradise, but like divinization of the whole being, not just body, but also soul. So that will be like final end. Close. Close. Well, he wanted to, to share. Connect, you know, so to connect the, the Jesus Christ heart. But I don't know really if the God told them about Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit at that moment. Mm -hmm. Because there was no need for Jesus Christ, because there was no yeah, original yeah. sin. So it's like, so God was a Trinity, but they didn't know like, okay, Jesus Christ was Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit was Holy Spirit, but there was no like, oh, that Jesus Christ who died for us on the cross, because there was no cross. Yes. He wanted to share his brightness with them. He did. Mm -hmm. Does that have to do with obedience? Like when he told them not to. Can we still speak about that before original sin situation? So they are obedient, okay. hopefully, you know, so <laughs> with this situation. It's just theoretically, but it's, the, it's important, you know, to understand yeah. this, the beginning of our creation. What was the goal, the final? Did they love each other? No, perfect, perfect. Perpetuate. Perpetuate the love of God. I hope they did. <laughs> and they were very dedicated. They, were nice they, they weren't just sitting there. They, they, they had to work. Like they had oh, to they worked. They, they, they were asked, you know, they, they were asked to start farms and producing and, you know, make yeah, this earth so really dependent on, on them. Well, they don't get tired. <laughs> I had one interesting discussion years ago with my students. So we're like looking, 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 and suddenly, so finally, they asked me, Father, can you start with this original scene? We <laughs> 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 have no idea. So can we? Can we have a scene? Some, some people in the in the Zoom yeah. chat, we yeah. have the uh, saying for enjoy creation, Fernando, and uh, mm -hmm. very good that's, to enjoy the correct. love from God. They enjoy the finish. For love, for love one another, for love free. Uh, it wasn't necessary. Uh, it wasn't no necessary, but, but God wanted us to share. Wanted yeah, I share. absolutely agree. The finish three are very close to find the, the, the goal, the final goal for them. To be part of him. Yes, this is correct. To be partakers of the divine nature. Yes, it Closer. means. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, caliente, caliente. We have the same thing. <laughs> okay, what's that? Okay, look from the from the our perspective. Do you have any goal for your life? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's good. <laughs> There's not many people they have really goal. So what's what's our goal? Heaven. Okay, so to go back to our creation, I know that. So, 
Is it any chance that Adam and Eve got the same call, the same goal for them to go to heaven? Yes. But people kind of already there. Right? No. In paradise. Paradise. Okay. So they were invited to go, starting in paradise, go to heaven. When will go to heaven? <laughs> We have the senses of God. Mm -hmm. the, okay. the, the, the desires, the... Mm -hmm. What's the most important for heaven? For heaven? Love. 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 So, what kind of love we have in heaven? Divine love. Eternal. Eternal. Eternal, divine, Eternal. human. Eternal. What else? Perfect. Perfect. Perfect means lacks nothing. Complete. Noble. Complete. Endless. Endless. Okay. Karl Wojtyla and John Paul II. Very often he gave a name unconditional. Total. No conditions. Total. So. We don't know. Pure. Yes. Thomas Aquinas, he said that probably we can imagine they will be ready to go to heaven when their love will be absolutely unconditional. And our lady who follow exactly the same path like Adam and Eve, she was born without original sin. He didn't go immediately after Jesus to heaven. So she spent some time here on earth until God said, okay, you are ready, mother. Now you can go. So we don't know exactly it will be after 100, maybe after 1,000, maybe between this, maybe more, but definitely, and that's the subject of today, definitely the human love is enough to go to heaven. If we serve human love, it's because from nature prepares us to heaven. The practices, our relationship, it's everything to understand our identity, who we are. What's the beauty of us as a created by God? So what happened with the with the original scene that we lost the holiness. They were holy, by the way. They were holy because the holiness and justice was, was just a part of the nature at the time. So we lost the, the, the super natural um, faculties or how we call this. We lost this extra. And unfortunately, from, we never existed in status nature pure. So our status after the original, uh, after original sin was status nature lapse, which means also in the nature, they were a little bit lower. So there, there was no harmony. There is everything is more difficult. So even in our nature is more difficult, but still the goal is the same. And that comes Jesus. And now with Jesus, we have status nature lapse, sed, redempt. So it's like he's given us like the handicap. Yeah, he gave us more than, than, than we received. Yeah. And the good news is that whenever God gives, it never is like, no, you do not deserve because his love is unconditional. We're unconditionally created by God. So we are going back to this when when the last consequence of original sin will be done, which is death. So we need to go through the death to come back to justice, holiness, and all these beautiful extra uh, gifts we receive from angels. Everything it look, looks for us. Because from God's perspective, when we created us, he couldn't create it. Okay, let's say this is like about Father Jay. 
God created Father Jay, and like he's 20 years old or 30 years old, and Jesus looked at him and said, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was, I don't know what happened when I was creating you. I was probably some busy with something. Please forgive me. You will receive a, a promo or some, you know, <laughs> when you go to, to Purgatory, so you will have like 10,000 years less, you know, because I, I'm so sorry. I should you create, you know, better way. Susan? Yeah, somebody is asking, if, could you repeat or explain more status natura? Status natura, state of nature, which is collapsed, lapse, yes. or, and then, redeemed so we receive adoption from god and we received his personal assistant in our heart so that's the much more than we received just in the in the, in the creation lapsing status natura lapse ah, okay. Okay. Lapse. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. thank you Jesus. so it's impossible from the god's perspective whatever he created he created perfect If we love unconditionally, we can't see people wrong or imperfect because we love them unconditionally. There is no conditions. And if we think this is another um, heresy of, of today that, and this especially in our area, our means uh, when we work with couples, then how often we make a huge mistake because we dream about somebody who will make me happy. So I'm not happy and I need somebody who will make me happy. So I'm looking for somebody who will be perfect to make me happy. So we are, don't see the beauty of our creation. So that's, I, I'm always pointing, to. this is the most important part. This is the most important. This is the part when we need to recognize our beauty of our creation. And we are called to be unconditional love. That was the goal for Adam and Eve at the beginning. This is the goal for us. And it, there was no plan B. When we made an original sin, it wasn't like, okay, Jesus said, God said, okay, oh, wow. Jesus, we have now a job for you. <laughs> <laughs> he was jobless. And now we have job description, go to heaven, go to, go to yes. earth. And repair this because these stupid humans destroy my beautiful. <laughs> no, that is the same from the beginning. To be unconditional love, not to do something nice and to have fantastic results. Our role is not to do, to have, and from the beginning, you are called to be unconditional love. And then we will see this through our action, and then we will see the results. So when we have lectures for our students, and we want to change their lives, to make them better for doing something wrong. Because we want to repair them. They do not need to be repaired. They need to be loved. And I am bringing to my students all my love, and also I am sharing all my love to the subject I am delivering. This is not about, not about changing them. It's about loving them and speaking to them with our hearts. And whatever it will be a subject, every subject, when we put totally our heart in, of course, we give them the beautiful teaching and we show them what they can achieve. But we do this not by doing. We do this by being. And that's the most important. Could you translate to Polish? It would be much yes. easier. Padre, el amor incondicional tendría que ver no solo con la heroicidad de la persona. So unconditional love is not only about being heroic, sino but que también tendría que ser la heroicidad acompañada de esa gracia que es el amor de Dios. So should be being heroic, but with the adding grace of God, with the grace of God. So 
Well, the heroic will mean that I am doing something very special. But it's not like the, it, that unconditional love, you accept everybody like it is. You know that that person is exactly, okay. Let's think about something which we made five, 10 years ago. There was something really bad. And we're definitely not proud of what we did 10 years ago. You have something 10 years ago, please don't, not to share, just <laughs> I'm mind reader. So it's enough for me to just keep in mind. <laughs> okay. Will you today do exactly what you did 10 years ago with all your experience, all your knowledge, all the things we have? No. So that was a lesson to make us today stronger. And from God's perspective, all our life is lessons, lessons, lessons to teach us how to achieve this level, which is unconditional love, love which is possible because this is the way how we were created. And this is the way how Adam and Eve need to live, learning, learning, learning until the moment they are ready to go to heaven. This is nature. This is our nature. This is our like spiritual DNA we have. We are called to be unconditional. And another, exactly the same situation. Let's go like three years ago. We did something bad. Not as bad like 10 years ago, but really bad. <laughs> and ask me, but be honest. If you really, you know, be more conscious or more working this three years ago, it will never happen? Do you think that if you will be like more focused or more concerned, so you will, uh, you will never did it? Yes. Maybe. Yes. yes, we will did it. We, and we will do it. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Because that was the best what we were able to achieve at this moment. Mm -hmm. If we look for ourselves from the today to past, oh, how could I? Mm -hmm. But at that moment, it was the best I could achieve. Mm -hmm. I did my best. And of course, it was much better than five years ago, earlier, which we also did something which we never happened later because we learned something important. Mm -hmm. So this is not heroic because it's like, I understand that every person is the maximum today, which is nothing to compare to, to what he or she could achieve in a year or, or a month or a day. So I'm looking at this person as a beautifully created by God and she or she is doing maximum what she can. So what I can do as a, if I love this person, I will give an, her environment or him an environment. We're dreaming that our children will have uh, the beautiful life. We pray, we want to make our children happy. What is the most important for our children to be happy? No. No. Yeah. Give them happy mom and dad. If mom and dad are happy together, 100% sure. So satisfaction guarantee or money back. <laughs> If you are together extremely happy, your children naturally will be happy because you are happy. So your doing comes from your identity. And the results are based not what you do, because this is just a natural consequence of who we are together. This is the most important. And that's what we need to really, be, to really focus. If you are a wife and you go to lecture and you have some conversation, difficult conversation, or you have a, a really you know, tough conversation, or you don't like each other for 24 hours, <laughs> if you go to the lectures, you are immediately on the lower level. Do you know that there was a research? If the couple is in a, just you know, like, let's say a regular crisis, <laughs> <laughs> which is like not bad it's just not normal but they are in crisis For th when they go to work 
their ability to deliver a good quality work drops to 60%. So 40% are gone. If they are in the real crisis, their effectivity is only 40%. 60% is like. So if they receive like $1,000, so they work 640% they receive for free because they can't deliver that kind of quality because they are in crisis. This is so important. As we know, probably Susanna mentioned this, we created, we started, a, I was lecturing for 27 years, but uh, I'm 37 years. So 10 years ago, I quit my, uh, no, 14 years ago. <laughs> 10 years ago, I quit my, my, my profession at the university and I dedicated, dedicate totally my life to serve couples with this program. So we have this program in six countries in four languages. We have this program here in Mexico, in Colombia, in the United States. We have this program in Europe, in, in, in Britain, and in Belgium, and in Germany and Austria. So I am looking all the time for priests and coaches who can make this program really living. And this, uh, I dedicated totally my life, not because I, um, Okay, maybe I lost my heart to teaching <laughs> because it's like too many procedures, too many bureaucracy. And then like everything in my country like become more money oriented than formation oriented. And I said, no, I want to uh, look that the beginning of end at the university starts when they stop teaching metaphysics. And this is the end of the university. And that is that's money oriented uh, a business. And they expect from us, you know, for working hard, they will pay us for us. And they need students to have people who bring money. And we lost the beauty of teachers who are, you know, masters or, you know, mentors who, who create their way of, of, of mind. So we need to recreate this. We need to do this. But this is only possible when we need to, to be not to do. It's not about what we can do to make our programs better. It's always a reflection how, what we have to do, what we can do, what would be preferred to do to, in order to be, then everything will come automatically, really automatically, if we would take care of this. I told you about the identity. The main uh, change which we observe in our families is the way how they introduce themselves. Because normally, if you have the situation that is Susanna beautifully uh, told about who is Father Jay, the most important information about who is Father Jay is his father. And I love my vocation and I love uh, uh, human, human love. I fall in love also like John Paul II in human love. But I love also my vocation. I have no conflict because we speak still about the same love. And we know that we are priests losing their uh, vocation and their marriage. It happens everywhere in the, in the world. You know how many priests we lost after the Vatican Council, Second Vatican Council, because of the crisis in the church? 60,000 priests. 60,000 priests we lost. Because of like confusion, that's not more traditional church. We want to be like very classy. To mod, modern say, okay, now every vocation is good, so I'm dropping this vocation, I'm starting new vocation. Oh, a huge crisis. Still, we are in crisis. <laughs> Probably we'll be always in crisis because crisis is nothing wrong. I love couples in crisis because when couples in crisis, which it means only one thing, we have problem. We do something wrong because we do not have re re good results. But if they do something wrong, it's because here is some problem. Okay, let's go and let's go deep. What I can improve in myself? What's the problem with me? What I can really make better? And then my action will be, will be immediately will be better. So one of the reasons why the main uh, strategies of our program is to help people recognize their true identity. Normally people will say, I'm a teacher, I'm a professor, I'm a manager, I am a CEO, I am a taxi driver, I am a stomatologist, I am a doctor, whatever. And how often we add 
I have a wife. I have a husband. How often we say, I have children. Or we have children. But very rarely people say, we have children. I have children. So when I hear this phrase, I ask him, I ask, you know, she said, okay, I have children, like three children. And I ask him, I am so, so proud that your husband adopted out of them. <laughs> <laughs> Does he know that this is not his children, it's my children? <laughs> so, because we can't be parents without each other. So we don't have children. We could be only parents for them. But the beginning starts with the recognition of my identity. Am I a professor, am I a teacher, or, or dentist, or doctor? Or I am a husband, I am a wife. Because when I recognize my true identity, I am wife. We are parents of beautiful, you know, four, five, six children, whatever, it's not about the number. I am wife of the most handsome and gentle man in the world. I am husband of the most beautiful, and beautifully great uh, wife. And together we are parents of our three or four children, or two children. That we start something uh, and So when we recognize our identity, we will bring good actions and we'll have amazing results. When we, hit, when we think about what we can do for our students is to not to have a beautiful results. Through the amazing, uh, actions, the first, we are bringing the best results by who we are, our dedication, and our love to, to show to them with beautiful examples, because they need only to be loved. Of course, they need to be teached. <laughs> they need to pass exams. But when they meet uh, a person who loves, immediately clear them to. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we open to questions. Uh, please, if everybody uh, maybe can turn on your micro so you can make a question. If I can ask all these simple questions. <laughs> <laughs> Susana, y dile, si alguien quiere hacerlo en español, podemos traducirlo. Sí, sí. Sí, también, también pueden hacerlo en español y podemos aquí hay muchos traductores. Exacto. Cualquier duda. Yo quiero hacer una pregunta. Hacemos más. Rafa, como estás ahí, te va a tocar ni modo para que practiques. ¿Qué nos recomienda leer? O ¿Qué recomienda leer para empezar a acercarnos a la, a la filosofía? Eh, eh, de Carol Boitigua. In which books would you recommend us to get closer to Carol Boitigua's anthropology, philosophy, and mayor? You know the, the story, the joke about uh, what I will do in, in Purgatory was just a, a, a priest. <laughs> I will read Carol Boitigua's books. <laughs> So I, I, I can tell you, you know, for being so close to his thinking and working so many years with the teaching of Karol Wojtyla, I can say that with his books, it's uh, you, if you, you will, if you will take his book in the evening, definitely you will have a deeper sleep after two pages. <laughs> so it's, it's not easy, but if I will recommend, I will start with his articles first, then books. Um, and he has several beautiful um, explanations of humanity, which presents amazingly his way of thinking about the nature of uh, our nature of human beings. There are probably there are some collections that will be whatever Karl was uh, his lectures about humanity. I will start with this, and that we, will we be have them in Spanish. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So I will start with this. I was, uh, will maybe, uh, okay. 
I spent really years teaching about Karl Wojtyla and about special love of responsibility. And Karl Wojtyla wrote in the in, in, in foreword to his book that he dreams that maybe somebody will be inspired by this book and do something based on this. And we exactly did what we did, what we did. We put this book into pages. Really, we destroyed this book because the book is a book. And we were looking for some uh, for guidance. What is this book about? And we found that this is book, this book is about how to go from falling in love to the successful uh, relationship finish or started with the sacrament of marriage. How we spoke in the falling in love with uh, about um, dignity of persons, about um, a friendship. Uh, he spoke about some uh, difficulties you can meet, which is our sexuality, which is our ego, looking for pleasure. And recently I recorded 13 short uh, videos with these subjects, totally based on the book. So it's not the book like book, because we speak about how to come from the falling in love to the beautiful relationship only based on of love and responsibility. And we are preparing translation to, 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 to Spanish. So if it will be, I can share with you because to every subject, as I said, we have three hours workshops. So you can you can just you can learn what I am saying and or you can put Father J better is to learn, you know, to, to get idea how we did it and then give workshops. And that could be beautiful. It was like 60 hours course about love in teaching of, of carnival too. Perfect. Uh, Thank you. I, Thank you so much. I think that we, we, we don't need to translate. I, I think that we understand. But somebody uh, write me a, a question. Uh, Rafa, ¿tra leer en español y se la dices? Porque me la mandaron a mi directo. Los, los matrimonios que no se casan por la iglesia, su vínculo es débil porque, porque a veces parece... Porque a veces parece, no sé si es por qué o porque a veces parece tan atractivo ese camino. ¿Por qué a veces parece tan atractivo ese camino? Okay, so couples who don't marry the church, uh, they're asking, is their union uh, weaker? weaker? And why also, why for some people it seems like an attractive way to go I'm not, not marrying in church? Yeah. We are researchers here. So let's talk very open. Yeah. Yes. Europe. In Europe, we have church, you know, next to each other, Protestants, Orthodox, and Catholics. The same Jesus Christ, the same Bible, and three different traditions for marriage. For Protestants, it's not fair. It's a sin if you date with somebody else when your relationship. If you are finish your relationship, be honest, finish, then you can start new relationship. That's for Protestants. For Orthodox, okay, first, uh, like the first, uh, the, 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 if the, to the space goes the rocket. rocket. So the first part like drops. Uh, now, no, we the, yeah, the, now we have the, now we have the, the stage okay. So the first marriage is just to, to start new life. <laughs> and if your first marriage is not satisfied, it's okay, divorce and come back to the church and we'll, we'll give you another sacrament of marriage. Yeah. Uh, you know, beginning is always difficult. On the principle, <laughs> difficile. Yes. So you have new chance. There's still the sacrament less solemn. They receive the crowns on the, the first sacrament of marriage. There is no crowns but still is the sacrament of marriage. And what is in our tradition, Catholic, Roman Catholic tradition, if you have problem, if you first marriage divorce, you are go to hell, <laughs> more or less. So we made the sacrament of marriage the most important thing, because if you do not practice in your sacrament of marriage, your soul is in danger. Yeah. Okay, now we have Pope Francis who says, no, 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 don't, don't be too fast in judging. Assist, learn, because maybe it's, uh, maybe this first marriage wasn't 
wasn't really valid. Make more procedures, be closer to people, because too often we blame people, we sell them to hell too easy, too fast. Yes. 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 Every marriage by nature is God is called to go to heaven. If that in our in our teaching, if the marriage was between men and women who are Christians, naturally the marriage is sacrament. So the rule in the in the sacrament in the sacramentology, if the couple wasn't sacramentally married, they're just living cohabitation, that they were living together. If they want to have a sacrament of marriage, we need to prove. Oh, and they, okay, their relations um, stopped or divorced and they started new. They need to prove through the canon, uh, canon lawyer. lawyer or they go to the court that the first marriage wasn't valid. They were not sacrament. Yes, but relationship, uh, marriage, a relationship between husband, man and woman for the Catholic, it's a sacrament by nature. The law on the 13th are kind of divina sapiensi. The first encyclical letter about marriage, and repeat later in the Casti Conubi by Pius the Eleventh, fifty years later after Arcanum Divinus Sapiens. So, it's complicated, but we need to be more focused how to assist the human way, because this is still the same way we go to heaven. This is our destination. It's not for you know. That's the our destination go to heaven and we need to assist people and things happen people make mistakes people make stupid mistakes it was just a lesson to improve our relationship so we need to really be concerned about the truth not about the um, so yeah down. yeah we're not to blame people we're not to sell them to hell we are here to help people to grow, to accept the lesson, the consequences of the lesson. Sometimes, okay, we can't go to the Holy Communion, but it doesn't mean that you can't go to heaven. The Holy Communion is not the only way to go to heaven. There was some mystic, he said, it was very controversial, <laughs> that knowing God and his love probably will have different heavens. Because could you imagine like the person who is like Catholic, very practicing, will meet in the, in the heaven uh, uh, a guy, Muslim, uh, married for, for four women. I said, I, said I, I spent all my life faithful to one and he's in heaven with four. God, it's not fair. Yeah, so probably God knowing our you know limits, he will dif make different patterns <laughs> to make us more comfortable <laughs> because of his love to us. Yes. <laughs> now, of course, if you will be on, on the level of unconditional love, we'll love everybody <laughs> without this. Uh, well, I have maybe a horrible question. There are no horrible questions. Only horrible answers. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, some people that I know think that Aquinas metaphysics is, is hard uh, reality. So we need to know more about the way that Carol Bukhiwa presents metaphysics because uh, I think it's more uh, accessible. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. If, if I read humanity, I found so many ways to, to make life uh, the, the metaphysic. And I read Aquinas metaphysic, I, I found uh, a distance between why. I do not have answer for any question. <laughs> for any question, what? Why could it happen? Maybe Benedicto. That's why they wrote about faith and reason. Uh, but uh, I, I, I don't know. But I found in Wojtyla's talk mm -hmm. a very kind way to, to understand the physics. 
but in a Guinness way, a hard mm -hmm. way to do yeah, it. Yeah, Pope Francis, uh, in one of his uh, talks, he said that it will be very nice to have extremely well organized church. Uh, everything like when you have rules for everything, but it's not the it's not the vivid uh, organism. He said there's like more situation we have the um, hospital on, on field, yeah, field, yeah. Hospital. Yeah, yeah, field yeah. hospital, field hospital, hospital. Yeah. then the beautiful clinic when you have yeah. the departments and we can send uh, all diseases to different expert and we can cure this person you know for years because everybody needs money for you know, we have a field hospital so that's where need probably that my i uh, like i understand for francis this is like really really called to be close to people to be with them and to help them to grow but not to Im to make them perfect or to repair them because they do not need to be repaired. They need only to be loved because they have lessons to learn. And this is the only way how they can grow. So only thing which we really need to do is just to be more concerned about loving. And we start, we can start every day with the one intention, God, please help me to bring as much love as possible today to all people I will, I will meet, I will serve them. And that is that the only metaphysic, which was the, the teaching of, of Karl Butte and all the mystics, we, we beautiful mystics we have. She's philosopher. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about philosophy. These days I'm more mother than a philosopher. So um, two things. First, um, could you tell us something about your program? Um, yes, this is. Well, this program, it's not like any like kind of courses we have in the church, like Alpha or the learning about meditation or something like this. This program is more like how to prepare for the church, a couple who will be helping in the church, in his parish or whatever area, to help other couples with marriage preparation program, with counseling, helping them with many, many issues, organizing a day of reflection for them. So this we have, it's a long process. So we have one, two, three programs based on anthropology, which is absolutely universal. We do not use theological language because we have no idea who is here, but we give them the basic, like we make them foundation. Grazia supponit natura. Mm -hmm. You know, so we prepare nature. Then we have program number four, five, and six, which is about the, the, the grace of the sacrament. So now we speak about theology. We show the beauty of sacrament of, of marriage. And then we have program number seven, eight, nine. And this is about our mission in church. And especially like the institution like this, which is very connected with, with the idea of Focus Day, of being missionaries in our daily lives. This is three, three years. These three years we learn about nature. These three years will go deeper to the beauty of our relationship as a second. So for example, I am God, this is for program number four. It speaks about what I said, if your spirituality is not based on your relationship to your identity, it's a bad, like, a bit bad uh, spiritual because you need to pray as a husband, as a wife, as a mother, as a father, not as a single uh, woman or man. So problem number five, it's about our relationship with God as a couple together, what we have in common together, what we can learn from God about being wife of this husband, what I can learn from, uh, from uh, being a, a husband to this wife uh, from God. And book number six is, it's about our parenthood. God is the father and we are parents. So what we can learn about our identity, knowing that God is the father. And because we are parents, so we know something, somebody here who is not father or mother, as a parents, we know something more about God than singles, other people not married, because we are parents. So we learn something about God for being a parent. And we learn something about us because God is a father. 
So how, how many things we can learn about our identity knowing that we have the same name? What called father, like Jesus called his, his father, father. And I am called father. So that's amazing thing. So that's the program C. And seven, eight, nine is about my gift, my charisma. What is the, my speciality? What's my, my own mission? A gift I received. Maybe my gift is the writing beautiful text. Maybe my gift is like bringing smile to people. Maybe my gift is just to, to speak about difficult things in a very easy way, which was probably my gift because I, you know, I wanted to be a very good researcher. I dream about not novel, but you know, something like really something and an author of many books. But my problem was whenever I found something really interesting, a week or months later, I found somebody wrote a book about this. <laughs> they wrote everything. So instead of being a researcher like, you know, wise man who is creating, I said, no, no, it's better to be interpret. So I became an interpreter of the beautiful teaching of the church, but making them in the easy, understandable language. So my student will never have a problem of understanding Wojtyla or Pope Paul VI or any other philosopher I used during my lecture. And it was my role to make their language understandable for my students. When I found this, and Benedict the 16, he said, 16, Benedict the 16, you know, very conservative. He said, we need to change our language. Yeah. We need to digitalize our language because the young generation doesn't understand us. Not the content, but the context, the way how we speak, not about what we speak. So that was probably a gift I would not probably. Um, okay, let me honest. <laughs> That's my gift. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and I spent really years learning how I can make my language understandable. So even if I'm talking in English, which is not my language, probably you have no problem with understanding because I'm not using any special formulas or something to prove how intelligent I am. <laughs> And we can talk about, you know, we can speak for an hour and our students will be like, what is talking about? <laughs> because we can use very specific language so they will be amazed of our, you know, wisdom, but it's not the role of our, of our lectures. Recognize your own gift with your spouse. Ask God, what is our real gift we receive as a couple together to serve in the church? and how we invite our children and to serve as a family in this church, working together, supporting, maybe it would be my neighborhood, maybe it would be my city, maybe it would be my country, it doesn't matter. This is your gift received from God to serve in the church. And this structure comes from Familiaris Consortio when uh, John Paul II, he said we have four tasks to, to fill uh, as, a, as a couple marriage. Uh, making community of persons, serving life, uh, being uh, active in the society, and then the, the four tasks we divided into six programs uh, uh, to um, to participate in the in the to be in the church and in the mission of church. So that's the identity, our Christian identity, and this is our mission. So nature grace and mission. This is about our program. So it's not just a program, it's like a formation for couples to have in the future amazing couples who will help us to, to grow. And what about this hero? Zero is marriage prep, <laughs> marriage preparation program. And you know, that was like last year, Pope Francis said, we need program for 10 years for couples. Thank you. Thank you. And we did it. Yes. But Vatican doesn't know about so this. <laughs> yes. Problem is yes. good. Yes. 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 Jesus started with Bethlehem with a small yes. community. She has another question. One, one thing. Sorry. Mm, could you tell us something about uh, making compatible that unconditional love with uh, healing wounds and free choice? people are like freedom because I mean like with children with our own children and our students we constantly uh, you know cope with this struggle between our desire to make them love God 
and their uh, freedom that wants to rebel and go away and not accept what we're trying to teach them. Um, how do we manage? Yeah, it's a uh, it's a subject for Tender next ten problems. years. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were losing uh, teenagers from the church. And this is something said from one perspective. From the other, it's like they're courageous enough to not go to church because they stop being afraid of not going to church. My generation, if you don't go to church, you will go to hell. So how often we practice because of fear. And how many years it took us not to laugh because of fear, but still it's like, oops, God will punish me. Are we still talking about God who is unconditional love, who is waiting how he can punish me? I listened to many, no, I didn't listen, it's not true, be honest. <laughs> but there was a lot of links sent to me during pandemia and was amazing preachers, also priests, who said, this is the God's punishment. God will never allow to make him know something. Now you will experience because you did very bad things. So now the pandemic is the God's justice. <laughs> punishment. So I was like, okay. Still, we talk about the same God, I know, because my God is unconditional love. And as I know, unconditional love can't punish because it's not unconditional. So it's a condition if you will not be good. So if our children stop going to the church without fear of being condemned, con con condemned. Con condemned, but that's a very good. How to show them that going to the church and loving God is fantastic, adventure. How to show them that you know, with God, I wake every day and I just, you know, my first activity is, is just start praying because it's like most beautiful and amazing, amazing time I, I, I have. Uh, three years ago, I joined a 5 a.m. club. Very bad club. For, for 5 a.m. club was, uh, Robin Sharma wrote a book about this and the 5 a.m. clubs uh, me, uh, says, we have four levels, and we need to cover these uh, this four levels uh, at the beginning of our day, so we'll know that every part was touched, and we check the, the pressure in the tires. So he made a 5 a.m. club, so we have 20, 20, 20 routine to cover all the things. 20 minutes for help, though, you know, jump, nice. run, do something with your, with your body. So 20 minutes for your body, just to remind him, okay, you are here to work. 20 minutes for, uh, for our relationship with God and with our spouses. So this is about relationship. And he said, pray, meditate, read Bible, or write gratitude. Gratitude. I am grateful God for last day. I spent, I joined this club three years ago. This is 5 a.m. club, but it's not true that you have to wake up at 4 40, uh, at 5 o'clock. You have to wake up at 4 45 to be ready at 5 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> it's really a challenge. And for more than two and a half years, I was extremely faithful to this. 4 45 doesn't matter what time I went to sleep. 4 45 to cover this. Now I a little bit modified this, but only because of, of the other reasons, but I, whenever I have access, I am going back to my 445. And I spend three hours in the morning to pray because this is my identity. I can't live without being in relationship with God. And it's even more and more time I need. So this is 20 minutes. So I started with gratitude. If you will make an experiment and you will start today, not tomorrow, today, and you will take a piece of paper to be electronic, uh, like iPad or whatever, and start writing 10 or 5 to, to 15 gratitudes daily. Do this for two or three weeks. Do this for a month. And you will change your mindset for unbelievable. Because we now see things from different perspectives. Because we're grateful. And we write this. I love to think of writing. 
this is the best way for me. If I think, I think rightly, yeah, yeah. because now I can see I can go. So you have 20 minutes for this, 20 minutes for this, and 20 minutes for mindset. So I start learning languages using Duolingo. Mm -hmm. Or you can have a courses or read books 20 minutes daily. Could you imagine it's a six o'clock a.m. Some of your neighbors start walking and start waking up and you have everything, every four areas ready to work. So we are unstoppable, we're unbeatable. At six o'clock, everything is touched and directed to serve with the most beautiful heart to this society world. Okay. It's great, no, it's not for everyone. Okay. It's only for crazy. <laughs> now moms are excluded for this because you have different rules. <laughs> Daddies are excluded when the children are small. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of uh, excuses. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Muchísimas gracias a todos por estar aquí con nosotros. La verdad es que nos deja mucho por, por aprender, mucho por reflexionar. Eh, unas áreas bien concretas en las cuales trabajar y bueno yo keep in touch yeah. eh, estaremos en contacto muchísimas gracias hubo momentos en que había casi 40 personas conectadas eh, muchas gracias de verdad y, y bueno pues es todo gracias a nuestro traductor oficial y nuestro traductor no, no oficial pero también este, 